Hello and welcome. Um, we're going to discuss in this video a uh, delta connected circuit like we see here. Uh, and it is an unbalanced circuit. Now we can see in each phase I've actually got 15 amps, which means the impedance in each phase has to be the same. However, we can see each of them has a different power factor. So here in phase A, right, which would be with my V A to B right there, I see 15 amps at a 90 degree lead. Uh, in phase B, which goes from B to C, I see 15 amps at a unity power factor. And then from C to A, I see 15 amps with a 20 degree lag. So first up, I've already plotted my voltages here, but I just wanna mark my voltages onto here. So what I got uh, right from V A to B, I have V A B, equals, and I'm told 600 volts, three phase, three wire. That means this is 600 volts, right? We know in a delta circuit, my line voltage and my phase voltage, they're the same. There's no difference between whether I'm measuring line to line or whether I'm just measuring here across the phase. So I got 600 volts and we're gonna use A to B as our reference, which puts it at zero degrees on our phaser diagram. B to C will be the exact same. V B to C equals 600 volts at 240 degrees. And then V C to A again will be 600 volts at 120 degrees. So that's how we lay out our uh, voltage phasers on our phaser diagram. Awesome. So now what I want to look at, we know all our phase currents here, which is I don't know, we don't have to calculate them. We're told 15 amps at a 90 degree lead, 15 amps at unity, and 15 amps at a 20 degree lag. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about those phase currents, and then we are going to plot them on my phaser diagram. So let's start with phase A, all right? So phase A, my voltage is here at zero degrees. I'm told I have 15 amps at a 90 degree lead, which means that if my voltage is here, my current is leading by 90, which is actually going to put my current up here. Gives me I A to B, right? Which means I A to B, we know is 15 amps, and it is going to be at, on my uh, phaser diagram, at 90 degrees. And that's just because it's leading the A to B by 90. Awesome. Now let's talk about the B phase current. So the B phase, I've got 600 volts at 240 down here. Now I've got 15 amps at unity. So we know I B to C equals 15 amps. Now it's at unity, which means that the current and the voltage are in phase with each other, which means that my current is actually going to be right here directly on top of my voltage, which puts it at the same 240 degrees. Awesome. This one is I B to C. Now the last one we want to talk about is uh, v or I C to A. So down here. So because my, um, sorry, my voltage is at 120 degrees, right? We said our voltage is up at 120. Our current is a 20 degree lag. Now that's a 20 degree lag from that voltage. So if the voltage is up here at 20, my current is going to lag, go clockwise by 20 degrees, which is actually going to put it here. So I C to A ends up, I C to A ends up being 15 amps, like we're told, at 100 degrees, which is a 20 degree lag from the voltage, right? So that's where that 20 degree lag comes in. Awesome, so now I have got my three phasers for my current, right? 
Now what I want to do is now I need to calculate my line currents. Now this is where it gets a little bit tricky. Uh, we, we know our rules can't apply for balanced circuits. This is an unbalanced circuit, which means we have to do the math and calculate our line currents. So the way we're going to calculate out our line currents is we're going to, we're going to do three formulas, right? So line A, we are going to go IA equals I, right? A to B plus I A to C. Right, so keep in mind, and this is where it gets tricky, my current coming here on line A comes into this node. Right, once I'm into this node, it splits and goes two directions. Right here would be A to C, and here would be A to B. So we add those up, right, vectorally, meaning we're probably using an HV chart. Now the trick is that A to C, we don't know what that current is yet. We have IC to A. A to C is the direct inverse of that. So I A to C is actually going to be right here. I'll write it down right here. 15 amps at 180 degrees from C to A. So C to A is at 100. So this one is going to be at 280 degrees, right? So it's the direct inverse of that. So that's how we would calculate I A. IB, we follow a similar process. We go IB to C, which we know is 15 amps at 240, plus IB to A. Now again, we don't have IB to A. We have IA to B. B to A is the inverse of that, so we will flip it 180 degrees, which means B to A is 15 amps at 270 degrees. Right, it is exactly 180 degrees apart. We do the same thing for IC equals IC to A, right? Comes in, here's IC to A plus IC to B, which we are gonna have to do the math for that. So again, IC to B, we don't have right now, but we do have IB to C. And IB to C is at 240, which means IC to B is the exact opposite so we minus 180 and it would be at 60 degrees. So this is 15 amps at 60 degrees. Now what I like to do is I like to take those numbers and that equation and I like to put them into an HV chart, which our HV charts end up looking something like this down here. So I do that math and I'm gonna end up with the total. I go IAB plus IAC and it ends up giving me 2.6 amps at five degrees, okay? So IA gives me 2.6 amps at five degrees, which I got there. So I get 2.6, so that's gonna be really small at five degrees, that's like right, I, A. And we can see that IB gives me 29 amps at 255 degrees. So I know that's coming straight down uh, which is covered a little bit here, but it's coming straight down. 29 amps is quite long, 255. So I'm going to draw that in right here. And then I see is 28 amps at 80 degrees. So that's pretty long and pretty straight up. And that is I C. All right, so I get those three values from those HV charts, and we'll get rid of that, right? So I got IA was 2.6 amps at five degrees. I got 29 amps at 255 degrees. And I got 28 amps at 80 degrees. So that's how I would do that, that math, and I would solve for those line currents. Uh, so thanks so much for watching. Uh, pretty much the trickiest type of uh, unbalanced delta problem you're going to get, right? Where each phase has a different power factor and a um, yeah different power factor. In this case, they all have the same impedance, but that would be the worst case scenario is if they all had different impedances as well. But that's how this one plays out. Uh, so thanks so much for watching. Make sure you check out my other videos down below and have a great day.